Welcome to the second part in a two-part Legendarium series about the rise and fall of Eric Bloodaxe. In the first part, we talked about how Eric became first king of Norway, lost his throne, and then became king of Northumbria in what is today northern England. In this episode, we'll talk about his troubled reign as king of Northumbria. Though a follower of the old gods himself, King Eric Bloodaxe minted coins that combined pagan runes and Christian iconography, a reflection of how northern England was a mix of pagan and Christian. Since King Eric boasted a royal entourage that could not be provided for with Northumbrian revenues alone, the king again took to looting the coast of Scotland. This powerful northern lord brought the wrath of King Edred of England, who invaded Northumbria and began pillaging and burning. After sending many northern villages up in flames, some of King Eric's men ambushed the royal army as they forded a river, leaving many mangled bodies for the crows. Another court poet celebrated the first defeat of the Southern English since Alfred the Great with the words, Artist of war, wetter of sword play, across the water leaps his prey. Furious, King Edred of England threatened further pillaging if the Northumbrians did not force Eric Bloodaxe from their kingdom. Fearful of further burnings, the Northumbrians forced Eric from their realm. He reigned for only one year. And for a time, the North replaced Eric with another Norseman named Olaf Citrixen, who made peace with King Edred. Meanwhile, Eric Bloodaxe traveled the Whale Road south to the Muslim kingdoms of Iberia. There, merchants traded British slaves for Arab silver, which could pay Eric's men. There, he saw an extraordinary collection of goods, including gold and silver, ornamental saddles, exquisite woven clothes, and silks in scarlet and green. After seeing the grand riches of Al-Andalus, he may have understood the Norse poet who wrote, Only the man who has traveled extensively and made far journeys can know and judge men of deep mind. It may have surprised Eric when the Northumbrian thanes turned against Olaf and elected him king of Northumbria for a second time in 952 AD. Archbishop Wolfstan, the kingmaker of Northumbria, and his council knew that King Edred of England grew sick, and they hoped to regain their freedom by bringing back Eric Bloodaxe. Despite his fading health, King Edred did not intend to suffer Eric Bloodaxe in the north for long. Once more, his troops marched into Northumbria. This time, they sent the church of St. Wilfred of Ripon up in flames, for the northerners regarded him as their patron. Monks who kept the saint's relics fled the carnage and wandered the countryside, the saint's bones still in their casket. The final fate of Eric Bloodaxe remains unknown, but the best guess is that while he traveled in the countryside with his retinue, some of his own guards turned against him. King Edred's gold heavy in their purse, they stabbed Eric Bloodaxe in the back and left him for the crows at a place called Stainmore, but only after a terrible battle with his loyalists. In killing Eric Bloodaxe, they also killed Northumbria's last hope for remaining independent of the House of Wessex. A court poet for Eric Bloodaxe lamented, Our last day has dawned. By the head of my dead leader, I will die cut down. So whoever gazes upon the pile of our corpses may see how we repaid our leader for the gold he gave us. Thus it is right that the chief warriors should fall undismayed and die embracing their illustrious king in companionship. For the rest of his reign, Edred of England kept the rest of North under his boot. Eric's widow, Gunhild, sought refuge with one of her relations, King Harold Bluetooth of Denmark. She lived long enough to see one of her sons, Harold, become King Harold the Second Grey Cloak of Norway, with help from his doting uncle Harold. For this, Gunhild became known as the Mother of Kings. 
Back in England, King Edred moved Archbishop Wolfstan to a bishopric in Dorchester in the south, and no English king ever allowed Wolfstan back up north, where he had reigned as kingmaker. Upon his death, Archbishop Wolfstan's loyal followers moved him back north to be buried in what remained of the Church of St. Wilfred, a northerner in death and life. Yet the bishop's mourners buried hopes for northern independence with their man. Not a year after Turncoat sent Eric to Odin's corpse hall, King Edred grew ill with a digestive complaint. It left him unable to eat anything but the juices of his food. He delegated much of his power to St. Dunstan, the abbot of Glastonbury, who intended to reform the wild and woolly northern church. And on November 23rd, 955, King Edred left this world. Dunstan buried him in the Old Minster of Winchester within an ornate mortuary chest. Though he had a brief reign, King Edred could say that he finally completed the work of Alfred the Great, creating a united England free of Viking power. Yet that unity meant subjugation for the northern English by the southerners. That wraps things up for this Legendarium series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.